You're listening to The Real Social Proof Podcast with Mr. Sleepers for Suckers himself, David Shane, and your glow girl, Darcia Root. Y'all heard? Let's get it. Welcome to another edition of The Real Social Proof Podcast. But it's another edition, but it's not another edition. It's a new fresh vibe. Hey, you know what I'm saying? And I got an edition. ill little co-host. So um, my name is David Chance, okay? I am an entrepreneur. I teach entrepreneurship. I love entrepreneurs, okay? I love people who have jobs too, okay? But I really have an affinity for people who have an idea and turn it into income, okay? But we have a very special host that you guys are going to hear a lot from today. That's it. Right. What's up? So welcome to the Real Social Proof First podcast. off, don't be that hype on the show, okay? I can't be Just excited. slow down. I'm just I can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't contain it. I'm just, I mean, we here. We're getting started. You know what I mean? Show. We're going to talk about how we're getting started. Mm-hmm. And I'm on here. And uh, my name is Dacia Ruth. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere at Dacia Ruth. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you, David, for having me join you on this journey. We about to blow it up. Oh, for sure. No, thank you for being <laughs> on because um, uh, people get tired of hearing just my perspective. So I'm excited about that. Yes. Um, so, okay, this is the first podcast. Do I see it? How do we st- How do we start? What do we... How do we start? Well, it started with a phone call. It did start with a phone call. And it started with a vision and with a dream and with some idea that went off in your head, I guess. Absolutely. Actually, you know, it started with a conversation. So that night we left the, the, um, the complex. Mm-hmm. And I forgot what we were supposed We were going to go shoot pool, but then y'all tricked us into coming to y'all house because y'all pool, y'all got a pool table hall type thing where y'all live in the rich part of town. Y'all got a whole <laughs> little, rich. They, they got a whole little, uh, little function uh, area. And, and, uh, and when you say that, you mean me and my fiance. So we, you, you were, and your you were, fiance. Because yeah. they don't know who they is. They, you pointing to they. They is in the room. She only brought Shout that up because he's here. If he wasn't here, like Darnio. we would just draw, we would just shout roll out with Tom the story. In the room. Okay, okay. I guess I got to shout out my wife. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Drea, you know, we love you, boo. I know, Dre here, this Dre, like, they shout me out. Right, right. Shout out to Andrea Shins. All the spouses in the room, we, we got you. But yeah, so we, we were having a conversation, we was uh, by the pool, yeah. and I think, Tom, were you there? Where was Tom at? No, he had went to go get your wife and Michelle. Yeah, it was Brandon's me, you, wife. Brandon, and you just kept asking questions about yeah. entrepreneurship. and so like just from like you were on the show. Yeah, absolutely, from the perspective, and I was like, yo... She asked really, really good questions. Patricia, didn't I, didn't I say that? I was like, yo, she's asked really good questions. But that's how Oprah became Oprah. She just asked good questions, mm-hmm. right? So, And I love that because, you know, I, I got teased, like, my little, well, he's not my little brother. We're 15 months apart. So sorry, John, if you're watching. Um, but he used to tease me for asking questions. I would, he would get home, and I would be, that was my way to connect. I would hmm. ask questions. And so he would be... Um, just getting in the door, and I would bombard him with questions. He's like, stop asking me so many questions. So I've been known to be that curious person always asking questions. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, I, I think uh, – so what do, you, what do you do? Explain what you do. So right now I support entrepreneurs and helping them get their infrastructure together. So they get systems. They, they need systems, and I help mm-hmm. them provide those. Gotcha. So you, you have a business – but you don't know quite how to – most of the time entrepreneurs are creative minds, mm-hmm. and they have the vision, but they don't know how to execute it. Right. And they need somebody to help them to walk through the A to Z of, okay, you're here in step one. You got the vision. You got the conception. But then how do you make it actual? And that's where I come in to play. So would you say it's, it's really, really important to um, have somebody um, have somebody on your team that – isn't the visionary because Absolutely. you can get so lost in the vision. Absolutely. Like you like, Oh my gosh, I see where this is going. And then you're like, okay, um, I don't necessarily see what you see. I see it. I can, I see it going there. But I see all this other stuff that needs to happen before we get there. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I was just talking to Patricia. Patricia. It's like Patricia, Patricia with a K. Patricia. Patricia. My bad. Um, I was talking to Patricia. <laughs> beautiful name. And beautiful name. Absolutely. It was just me that was fumbling over it, so I apologize for that. Um, I was talking to her, and I told her that, you know, I've taken a few tests about left brain, right brain, and now there's some new theories that say that's not even necessarily true, but we're going to stick with the fact that believing that that's true. Mm-hmm. So your your one side of your brain being the creative side and your other side being the one that's just the more analytical side that does the you know, the other pieces that are not creative. And I feel I fall right in the middle. So 
that puts me in a good position because then I can connect with the visionary and say, oh, I do see where you're going because I'm just as, you know, I can connect creatively. Right. But then I can say, okay, but now we need to put some legs to this because you got to get there. You can't just live in your dream world. You have to make it into a real world. So right, right, right. So That's where be- I lie. And uh, bring the mic a little closer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or I can scoot so, in some more. I was just trying to get a good angle for nah, all yeah, these. get up on it. Get up, you know what I'm saying? Get the people need it. to get know that you <laughs> in the building. So um, Catch I, me. We thought that this was a fitting topic for today is the genesis. Why? Because it's the start of a podcast. And we literally started this podcast from um, just saying, yo, you want you want to do this podcast? You're like, yo, bet. Let's do it. And we jumped in the studio, and we actually did it. We actually did it. We actually so did it. from my side, because I'm going live on, on, on my side, and so can you just please give us a little taste of who you are, David Shans, for the people who may just be able to grace, you be gracing their presence for the first time. Oh, for sure. Cool. My name is David Shans. I am an entrepreneur. I actually used to work at the Cheesecake Factory as a server. Actually, before then, I worked at Olive Garden, but I got fired for stealing cheesecake, with, and then I got the job at Cheesecake Factory. It was crazy. Cool out, Patricia. It's, it's not all that bad. I, I I was upset at that time. I was, you know, at that time I was I was working at Olive Garden and I was a security guard, both. So I was working my job, you know, as a server, and then midnight. Any first off, anytime you got to wear a uniform at night, you you know you're doing something crazy. But uh, I was I was a security <laughs> guard. At uh, at this, it was like a power plant or something hey. like that. And uh, you used to work there too. No, I'm. Sorry. Are you waving to the people? Yeah, on? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was representing. She's like, "Hey, okay, doing stuff crazy at night wearing a uniform." No. So I was. I had both jobs, and it was devastating when I got fired. For one, I blame them because everybody was doing it. Mm-hmm. Like there was an area where the cheesecakes and this were. Was for your mama. It was for my mom, mm-hmm. my grandma. Oh, and your grandma. My okay. grandma, okay. rest in peace. Okay. And my aunt. Okay. Okay. They oh, got you some nerve. Up the whole fam. Yeah, but I mean, one slice to share. You feel me? But they got some nerve firing me for giving my family some cheesecake. Te- I just felt like they was wrong for that. Pe- technically, you didn't pay for it. Oh, you on their side? Okay. I'm just saying. I just. Okay, all right. Just do you want people to pay yeah, for you working for the man? Do you want people to pay for these uh, social proof conference in twenty twenty? Anywho, all yes. right. So, okay, but I guess that's my point. I was upset at everything but me. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. So everybody does it. Earlier that day, my friend like hooked up their friend, mm. but nobody ever got caught, and I'm the first one to get caught. Mm. Now I'm upset not because I did something wrong. But because I felt like they were singling me out. Got it. You know what I mean? Got so it. um I actually got fired. And um it wasn't that bad because I still had the other job, but it was bad because I had two jobs and I still just couldn't like make ends meet. First off, anybody's listening, getting a second job is rarely the answer to your problems. Okay. Was, tell me why. You ever met somebody who had two jobs and they was just like balling? Like, yo, I'm good. Like, I got both income. I don't know why it's like that, but getting a second job is just rarely the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably you... a spending problem or it's probably, hmm. you feel me? Like, yo, if you get a job making $12 yeah. an hour and you work 35 hours a week, you're probably going to get another part-time job making $15, $16 an hour, work at about the same but they're going to take out taxes, and you just you still the same you. You got no time to spend the money, but every time you go out, you say, oh, I need to spend the money now because I work so hard. And then you got the same money problems. Make sense? I, you want me to introduce myself, right? Yeah. Okay, got fired yeah. from Cheesecake Factory. I was just going to let you go because you okay. was flowing with it. Okay. And, you, know, you, was, you probably was speaking to somebody's real situation. Oh, for sure. So, you know? um, And that's yes. hard to say, like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get, release this one job because you at least think that that supplemental income is helping you get. Yeah, And, and sometimes I, maybe it does temporarily. I just don't know why it never helps. Okay. Think of somebody that got two jobs. Man, does if anybody has had two jobs or can testify to that, it takes up. So I got people on here saying it takes up too much of your time to improve yourself. Hey, I rock with Jesus. Twenty nineteen is is um, supporting your your theory here that oh, two, thank- two jobs is not the answer. And I'm, I'm trying to find somebody. I'm I'm really independent research. Do me okay. Uh, all right, what's the email going to be? 
What's the, we got to make up an email address so that when people actually hear this podcast, um, they can I submit their questions. I thought it was podcast at realsocialproof.com. Is it? But you didn't want that, though. I didn't, but... I think we're just going to do Dacia at realsocialproof.com. Okay, com. he just wants the emails to come to me. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Entrepreneurship stuff, okay. right, Brady? All right. Come on, so, give me something. So he's just like, okay. Give me you, y'all okay. see how that, okay. that, that goes? Is it because I'm female? Bro? So, uh, Is so, it because I'm the woman in the room? Nah, because you're the most responsible. <laughs> so uh, they email me. <laughs> it's going to take a little while to get back to them. <laughs> but I, um, no, so what I was saying is um, email, anybody that's got a second job, you got two jobs, and like, yo, you feel super relieved. Like, yo, that's what I needed. I needed that extra income. Just email us and let us know your story because I just haven't found anybody yet. Okay. That, that was the answer to the problem. Fair. But That's anyway, fair. I lost a job at the Olive Garden and I was still working at a as a security guard and I tried to pick up extra hours. Mm-hmm. And then I applied to the Cheesecake Factory and I got that job. And then I was working both those jobs. But then I realized if I just stopped working that job so much, I could make more money at Cheesecake Factory. So I quit that job. And then I was at the Cheesecake Factory for six years. Hey. And I was able to quit and become a full-time entrepreneur by building a T-shirt brand called Sleep is for Suckers. And now we do all kind of stuff. And I teach other entrepreneurs how to be entrepreneurs. Awesome. Awesome story. Yo, Donald, so can we get a round of applause sound in there? <laughs> You got one of them? I, okay, I, cool. I got you. I got you right here. <laughs> we got to do a manual first, okay? We're not the breakfast club yet. <laughs> we not. We, manual. We, we, <laughs> right, we nobody. Oh, yeah, wait, right heaven, now. wait, heaven woke okay. up. Heaven <laughs> woke up. But she woke it's up and started clapping out of right nowhere. Now. That it's was lit funny. in the studio right now. Okay. So heaven uh, is stretching. She she got up on that clap. Right. So that Clap-ing is out. that is me and my story. That's you. Okay. That's good. Um, but we were talking about starting, 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 starting because we were trying to think of the topic of the first podcast yeah we and, had, i had a list of 10 and he was like yeah that sounds good so we're just gonna talk about starting and <laughs> <laughs> we'll push that aside yeah it, it, it didn't take that much mm-hmm. all right so okay i got a real question for you go for it so when we talked about it you said you were thinking about doing something i forgot what it was yes yes that's a good segue what i like it? where you're going with you that. Like that i appreciate that that was an alley-oop and i'm gonna catch it and Swoop. i'm gonna go ahead and um, dunk the ball real quick so yeah i was um he called me um, about uh, he being David, called me about a week ago. And he said, you know, I have this idea. I want to start a podcast. And I want you to be the co-host. And I said, okay, great. Let's do it. And I told him, I told David that, I told you that I had been thinking about starting. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I had been contemplating starting. I had been researching and developing. And I read in your book about how you talk about how you like F, or not F, but you said, I don't cuss forget my Forget okay. research and development. I don't curse either, but I say. <laughs> oh, that's how you yeah. saw it in your head, though. Like <laughs> yeah, it was that strong. Yeah, it's like, nah. I'm skip all that research and development stuff. I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna start. And for me, it was I'm analytical and I can have analysis paralysis, so mm. I can stay so far in my head that I don't ever do it because I'm thinking through it and want it to be so perfect that it just it never comes through. Because yeah. I would have had the email done and I would have had the website and the, I would have had all the pages, social media pages, and I would have produced at least, you know, enough content and I would have had all that together and still wouldn't have done the podcast. Right, right. Because I'm on that side of it. Yeah, and we were actually supposed to get together earlier today to, like, really go over show notes and discuss, right? Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. Actually, we were supposed to do it at 5. Yep, yep. We were supposed the, to do it at 5. Then we wound and up you, just... You posted at 1. That you was, you was ready. And so, you know, I, I immediately, you know, what I thought about it was What's like, that? I'm like, God bless Drea. Because, like, she could just got to be ready. She going to have to be ready. Uh, she got to be hates flexible. It. She, <laughs> hates it. she hates the way I live my life. Like, it's just, oh, let's out go. To my girl. She holding you down. Yeah, you, man. She but, holding you down. That's awesome. But I want I want to really dig into, because there's a lot of people that's listening right now that want to start their podcast or start something, start right? Start something. Um, so what it took for you was, I guess, somebody with, um, a similar belief system and just kind of aligned to say, I want to, like, I need to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. let's, let's go forward and they Mm -hmm. pull you. Right. Mm -hmm. So how would you teach somebody to create that situation? Um, that how it happened to you? Because pretty much you were just in the environment. Like you just hung around. Yeah. So, like, how did, like, what, what was the system with that? Because I know you work with the Shooters Can't, you work with Brandon, all his endeavors. How did that come about, you just being in the environment? Uh, being willing, being open, and being dedicated and seeing opportunity for working with Brandon. Um, it came from 
although he, he and I, I've known him since I've moved to Atlanta. I'm originally from Chicago, been here almost two years. And um, since I've met Brandon, just had a cordial relationship, but we didn't really have, you know, in-depth conversations outside of just when I saw him, hey, what's up? But he had posted something on Instagram and I followed up with him and just said, hey, let's talk, let's chat. And I think, you know, for both of us, we were, we seized the opportunity. We saw an opening, we saw an opportunity, and we just made a connection um, and didn't hesitate. And so being ready, being open, and instead of me seeing an opportunity and a call out to say, and then questioning it or saying, well, maybe am I ready or is this going to be a good fit? I didn't know any Mm -hmm. of of those answers. I really didn't even know what he was calling out about. But um, I said, you know, I might be able to help you. Let's figure it out. And that's where it started. And so I think it starts with an open mindset and then meeting that with action. Even when, because Drea texted me first, right? She was like, Dasi, I'm so excited. David wants to do a podcast with you. And so I said, cool. I was like, let's talk now, like mm-hmm. right now. Yep. Um, and I could have waited and said, oh, well, let's talk tomorrow because it was kind of late. I was like, let's talk tomorrow. And then you hit me up. He was like, I'm still working. It's midnight. Sleep is for suckers. Like, True. I'm up. True. Um, so, yeah. So then we, we talked at, like, midnight. And it was the same day that you had introduced the idea, and I was ready yeah. um, to explore it and figure it out. And at that moment, I no longer had any fear about what would come of it or if it wouldn't work or if we wouldn't go further than that conversation. I didn't care. Right. I just wanted to see. I was more curious than I was fearful. Right. And so that what that's what propelled me forward. Right. Yo, you know what? You didn't ask a bunch of questions. You really didn't ask a bunch of questions at all. Like some people might get a call and say, yo, let's let's start this podcast. They're gonna have some questions like, okay, cool. How are we gonna split the money? Okay, do we got some sponsors? Okay. Like what are gonna be the times? Like what like do we gotta have a theme? We gotta prepare. You didn't say none of that. You was like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. So for those people out there that's listening who are having a like they know, like they, like you said, mm-hmm. you have analysis paralysis. They know they have analysis paralysis, mm-hmm. meaning like you analyze everything and it just paralyzes you to mm-hmm. do nothing. Uh, that awareness, like talk to those people about like, you know you have a problem. What do yeah. they do now? Yeah. You just have to make a decision. And it, 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 it sounds very cliche, but it's real simple. It's your mindset. You really have to decide. Um, and there's been a... a viral video that's been going around recently and I wish I knew the person that um, did it but if, for those that know that there's this girl she has braids she's light skinned she has braids and she's sa- talking about deciding and she said that it's a, a breakdown that side is like you have to kill the other options and then just make a decision and go with it mm-hmm. and so you at some Shout point Sarah. You, Shout out to Sarah Fontenot yeah that's homie. who it was yes yeah. it, absolutely great so um, shout out to Sarah <laughs> Thank you. And so with that, um, you, you, you have to kill off the other options. You have to just move forward. And you can't consider, like, um, the what ifs it doesn't because what if it does? Mm-hmm. And so really just you have to fight that fear with action. Absolutely. Um, you have to balance it out with action. You have to balance it out with um, a, a mindset shift and a decision to just move forward and do it. And figure it out as you go because we're figuring it out as we go. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. you know, it's never going to be perfect. So that all sounds like it's something that you may have heard before, but it's so real. It's so true. Yeah. And I, I kind of want to ease everybody's, um, ease your thoughts about winning. I'm here to tell you, it's one thing to start something and it succeed. But I'm hoping that everybody that listens to this that's stuck, you begin to go on this journey of building something because the feel, honestly, the feeling of building something is way more rewarding than succeeding at it. Mm. Okay, I, I I really want y'all to understand the feel for me. This is for me, the the feeling of actually building it, like going through the process, picking the colors, picking the logo, like pick, coming up with the marketing strategy, like the feeling of building something. It's way more rewarding than when you got it because mm-hmm. once you get it, you'll just want more. Mm-hmm. So I did mm-hmm. the uh, the conference, uh, Social Proof, last year. We had over 500 people. And after it was over, it didn't seem like, oh, wow, it was a success. Even though it was like it was packed out um, and people say, yo, it was a success. And actually, how I saw it in my head is exactly how it went, right? Mm-hmm. So the vision was fulfilled. Mm-hmm. But when it was over... I didn't 
Like there was no like hands in the air, music playing. Yes, we did it. For me, it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. It was, okay, it's over. Now I got to do it again. Mm -hmm. And now I'm more excited. Look, I was we was here yesterday, and shouts out to my man Christian, Christian uh, Ruffino, uh, Christian Ruffin. I'm sorry, Christian Ruffin, um, One Stop Productions. He's going to be producing Social Proof, and I'm showing everybody the videos of how it's going to look because he got these big screens mm -hmm. and the lights, and he's really going to make this thing look like a movie. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I showed like Brandon and everybody in the room like the video that Chris sent me mm -hmm. of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And then later that day, I'm like, Brandon, check this out. He was like, oh, you showed me already. I'm like, I ain't show you yet. I ain't show you. Not you. He's like, uh, yeah, I already saw that. But I'm so, I'm so, I'm Calm so down, excited. Calm down, thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so excited in the building process. Now, the day where everybody comes, I'm going to be on a high. But when it's over, the fact that I pulled it off the way I saw it in my head, mm -hmm. it's not as rewarding as you think. So for everybody, just jump on a journey today. Just jump on a journey of building it. I don't care if you win or lose. Like, take that out of your head because I think that's why people don't start. It's the fear of losing. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the feeling of building, it, it's so unexplained. And I think it's... It's the fear of losing, but it, it may come in the form of the fear of embarrassment mm -hmm. um, or, you know, especially amongst your peers or f or being perceived as a failure or, you know, you think that there's going to be this crowd following you after you don't get the success that you were thinking of that's going to be like, hey, what happened to that? Or ha 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 pointed at you. Mm -hmm. And none of those things are true. And I've heard so many people talk about like most people don't even care. Right. Or oh, for sure. They don't even care. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're so <laughs> consumed with whatever is going on in their world, they probably won't even remember that, oh, yeah, six months ago he was talking about so-and-so. I don't know what happened with that. But anyway, hey, what's up, David? How you doing? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's uh, it's so funny that way, too, because, yeah, we think everybody cares and they don't. Nope. Um, but most of the things that well, people... Well, maybe a few people care. I mean, they care to the point where um, just, they don't want you to win humor. bigger than them. Right. But nobody, nobody's looking like, oh, my gosh, you failed. Yeah. I'm going to, like, post you on my Facebook. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. But I've taken that journey. For, well, for one, let me put it this way. Unless you're doing a conference or something like that, you're probably not going to experience public failure. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm doing this on a big level where we have a venue, and people have to come to the venue and they all have to be there at one time. And then we decide whether it was a success or a failure. Okay. But most Fair people, it, like you. So you're saying no, live events. Yeah. That's, that's where you, because that's when people don't stuff. show up. Oh, that's some scary I, stuff. I, I agree. I but agree. most of the people that's listening to this, they're not doing that. You might have a t-shirt brand and you're afraid of failing. But, but nobody, nobody gets to see your back store. Nobody knows. Yeah. I mean, they, don't know how we, they don't know. If nobody knows. Two or 200. They don't know. Nobody they knows. Don't know. So events are scary because mm -hmm. it's public failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for pretty much everything else, it's you just stay excited. Yeah, you just stay excited. Absolutely. That's it, pretty much. Um, but I want to I want to go through a quick list if I if I could. Yep. I, I put together a little list. I see it. And then while you're pulling that up, we did get a few comments. So uh, IG Live is is kind of popping a little bit. So thank you guys. Hey Dana, it's truly inspired Martin in the building. Dana, hold um, on, no, because Dana's on mine too. Okay, well she's Dana on both here. of us. She, she, she be in. <laughs> she's right here. She she's, just said, she's mine. Wait, David, did he just snatch my viewer? Like, okay, she said, can you I have one? Have my um, first off. You first off, I knew her first. Viewers? Okay, you did, she you did, like but she she's my friend too. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. And then Gina said, the time is always now. And then I Rock With Jesus 2019 said they needed to hear that. So I think that's when I was talking about, you know, just starting and getting over your fear and moving with action. So awesome. Absolutely. So, so we're getting he, it done. So Smart Guy Stuff, his name ain't Stuff, but it's Smart Guy Stuff. He okay. said, say you're not going to celebrate until you are a millionaire. But I'm telling you, I thought I wasn't going to celebrate until I made my first 50000 part-time mm -hmm. or you make six figures, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, before you made six figures, it's like, yo, this is about to be a celebration. And then you do it, and it's like, I mean, mm -hmm. you'll always want more. Forget that, right? You might get married and say, yo, I'm going to be super excited when I get married. But then you get married, and it's like, you're married. And you just enjoy and the marriage. You're still super excited. You get a brand new. Uh, I'm, okay. Um, you get. Uh, nah, shouts out. It is exciting, but it don't have that same feeling. Almost like getting your dream car. Mm -hmm. You get it, 
But in about 12 months. Yeah, and then it, it kind of wears off. It, it, just wears, gets, it, it just gets comfortable. You're gets used comfortable. to it. You, Absolutely. You're used to it. I, I so wanna, you're looking for the next thrill. Yeah. Something else that's new and attainable and exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you got that already. Yep. Yeah. Everything by longevity loses its luster. Yeah, absolutely. Period. Absolutely. So um, how do you keep that fresh? How do you how do you keep it exciting? How do you keep it? Um, or are you just seeking have, the next new thrill? So for me, always building something. Okay. So everything that I build has no finish line. Okay. There's no finish line to it. So our goal might to be might be to have a hundred thousand um downloads. Mm -hmm. When we get a hundred thousand downloads a month or a week or however I don't even know what a lot is, we just out here. Um but let's say you get a hundred thousand um unique listeners every week. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. But once we get there, you think it's celebration time? Because it doesn't go from zero to a hundred thousand. It goes from zero to ten to fifteen yeah. to twenty to 25 so it doesn't feel like a big jump okay. and by that time we'll probably feel like we should have 200,000 by this time so so is there is there a satiating point you know what I mean like is there a, is there a point where you just well first off Brandon don't know what satiating means so I need you to really break that down for him because I was looking I'm looking out for my my you know what I mean my listeners associating associate because you can't you can't be associated with anything Brandon <laughs> <laughs> satiated so you know when you a full point like a point where it's like okay you you pour into this cup you keep pouring to this cup at some point there's a there's a point where you spill over because you fill the cup so you've reached a point where you okay I've, I've met some sort of mark and I'm just good you know you talk about like um you know brand with Drew um and he talks about how there was a point where he was bored because he had just he didn't have anything to do and he was just in a position where he needed to find something new but he got to a place where he was just like, okay, I'm cool. I'm, I'm floating. I'm chilling. Do you mm. do you feel like for you, David, do you have a satiating point? You're just going to keep building on top of the building on top of the building. Well, shout out to Drew. Um, I know that's not true. I know that's not true because okay. he had 1,000 people at his first conference. Sure. And he had 2,000 people at the next conference. Because okay. I know Drew, Okay. if he doesn't have more than 2,000, he's pissed. Okay. Well, I'm not talking about just for live events, and I know we, you know, we're talking about conferences because you got social but, yeah, it's, 2020 it's just, coming. It's just built. It's just building something. I'm, yeah. I'm, if if you ever get to a point, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to understand what that point looks like. Maybe explain to me, maybe in your life, a time you got to a point where you're like, "Woo, I did that. I'm done." Where there was never another level. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, but you you still can get like in education. Mm -hmm. You when I got my master's degree, I said I was done. That's not to say that I'm not done learning, right. but in terms of education, yeah, I'm at this point, I have no desire to go get a PhD and I'm I'm satiated with I'm full. That's the word for that today. Word is crazy. Satiation. That's the word for today. Can that be the name <laughs> of the podcast? Association? <laughs> It's all about your satiations, Brandon. Okay. It's all about you. No, it ain't. It's satisfied? a satiation. I'm just saying. I, I feel like if you keep or if you're always chasing the carrot, are you really? Because I know in your forward, right, for your book, for um, dreams are built overnight. Um, and then you, you, Et talks about how you he liked he sat down and had dinner with you and he mm -hmm. liked the fact that you had ambitious content. Mm -hmm. But you know, is there ever a time where you're just content? You just, you, there's no more ambition. You're chilling. You just want to be with your family or, you know, and maybe that's what it is. I'm just, mm. I'm just throwing it out nah, there. Maybe sure. that doesn't exist. Um, but I, I would like to think that there's a place where you just, you get full and you're okay just being full. Maybe. For a maybe, season even. Maybe. So for, for me, I will say I am extremely ambitious, but I'm extremely content, meaning if God doesn't do anything else for me in my life, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I honestly don't feel like I've done anything to deserve the blessings I'm receiving now. Mm -hmm. So, like, who am I to say, good, David. Um, yo, I want more. God, you got to bless me with more. If you don't, then I'm upset. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying it has to be chasing a carrot. Like, you got, you got your master's, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, no more education. But you, you didn't get your master's just to have your master's. Right. You want to do something with it, yeah, right? absolutely. So let's say, for instance, you build a business and you get to a point where you just retire, like you are super wealthy, and you start helping children. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the goal once once you start helping kids, you'll want to help more okay. kids. I see where you're going. When does this stop? I see where you're going. Like you're, you're think, always growing, but then it may absolutely. it may take a different direction. Absolutely. The career may take a different turn. So yeah, okay, life cool. is a life is a piece of art. You never you're and the always, canvas just keeps getting bigger. Yeah, I love that. You just keep painting, okay. right? But I, w- I want to share this list with y'all Go real quick um, of people uh, before they okay. became you who you know, but um, uh, like where they started from. So Whoopi Goldberg, did you know? Did you know what Whoopi Goldberg did before she became Tell Whoopi me. Goldberger? No. Nope. Burger. <laughs> she was a morgue beautician. Is that her real name? Whoopi Goldberg? I don't or know. Or is that a stage name? I don't we know. Have to, we have to. Can we fact find name is that? way too cold. Yeah, let's let's. Oh, name is way too cool. Actually, no. Thank you, Katricia, coming through. It's uh, Karen Elaine Johnson. What? That's, that's her, her name. That's her real name. Did y'all know that? Whoopi Karen Goldberg. Elaine Johnson. Who comes up with a name like Whoopi Karen Goldberg? Elaine Johnson is Whoopi. Where does it come from? I don't know. We got to find that part Somebody out. Somebody going. Okay, Katricia. Katricia. Give, give, us <laughs> give us more. Give us more. Give us more. But uh, Channing Tatum was a stripper. Okay, Johnny Depp sold ballpoint pens over the phone for all my ballpoint pen salespeople. Kanye West worked at the Wait, Gap. Wait, who was the stripper? I'm sorry, go back to that. Out of all that, <laughs> that's the only thing you. Because <laughs> I was like Ch- Channing Tatum. Okay, got it. Channing Tatum. Okay. Kanye West worked as a sales associate at a Gap at the Gap. Jennifer Hudson worked at <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> I like I'm trying to paint a picture of and that's like Chi-Town. that's Chicago in the um uh, in the building. Oh, right? for sure, for right, sure. Right, right. I don't care I where you we... are, there's somebody who came from exactly where you yeah. next time you pull up the Burger King, okay? It could be Jennifer Hudson. It could be it could be the next gen. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Um what else? Demi Moore worked as a debt collector. So then people that be calling you. That's, that's right. Demi on the line. That's on the line. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you might want to get a contact. Uh, <laughs> Jim Carrey was a cleaner in the factory. Then they say Jim Carrey was a little bit slow, too. I think Jim Carrey, they say he was that. like a little bit slow. I never heard that, but. Yeah, I mean, money I'll, I'll go with you on that one. I'll shake my head, yeah. Vince Vaughn was a lifeguard at the YMCA. Mm. Vince Vaughn. Mm. Lucy Liu was an aerobics instructor. Mm-hmm. Eva Mendez sold hot dogs on sticks in a shopping mall. Shut up. Ain't this, yo, are y'all seeing this yeah. a little bit? Like, yeah. think about all the people that you passed today in first the mall. Job? My first job, I gave myself my first. My first, first off, my first job was living in my parents' house because you had to do work, and it was slave work. Come on, man, that's not what we're talking about. Everybody but it had was, to do work though. in their parents' house. Yo, you mean to tell me that's not you, what want, we're you want about. you want me to Chores? clean? Are you, you serious? You want me to clean, take out do the trash, this, wash dishes, hey. and you gonna pay me in food? What that sound like? Okay. Okay. Slavery. First of all, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> sound just like slavery. Can I can I shout out Drea? Or is that she's on your? Is she on your live now? She's no, your live. she would never join my live. <laughs> she would just join the live of the person that's because she that's his wife. <laughs> for those that don't know, so she can I claim her as my viewer? Okay, oh, great. for sure, you got it. You got it. <laughs> um, oh, who else? We got Chicago um, shouting out on the on the live. Okay. Cheryl Crow was a primary school teacher. George Clooney was a door to door insurance salesman. Hmm. Nicki Minaj was a waitress at Red Lobster. Okay, so for everybody who thinks that George Clooney is like super fine, I wonder if they were like falling out when he came to the door. It was like, oh, hey, I want your insurance, boo. Uh, you don't get super <laughs> fine until you get money. Okay. As a guy, as a man, mm, as a man, you don't get super fine. I, we got to dig up some pictures. For the most of part, Clooney. right, Tom? Like, I don't know. For the most part, men don't get super fine until they get some money. Especially, never mind. Uh, hey, wait, what was you going to say? Nah, it's like, <laughs> not, you know what? It, it maybe it's not money, but sometimes money gives you confidence, and confidence makes you attractive. Makes you attractive. I can see that. Cause believe it or not, you stick out chest believe, out a little bit more. Yeah, you, believe you it or not, bank. I used to be ugly in Come on, school. Man. Come on, man. I was, <laughs> I was funny looking. No, I was. Come on, looking, man. <laughs> I was looking at some pictures from Come school. On, I said, "Dang!" <laughs> All right, um, uh, Gab Gaboria Sidibi. Say that again. Say it three times. Gaboria Sidibi. Say that again. Say that again. Guess what she was, though? What was she? A phone sex operator. Ooh. The voice. Okay, so we not. She was the original voice. We need a. Donald, you talking about you the voice. She the original. I need some sort of like, some, you know, some sound to come through right there because I'm not saying anything else. I'm not going to. I'm just saying. I'm not going to say anything else on that one. Hello. 
What I'm you leaving that right there. Let her do that. What you doing? Man, phone sex. <laughs> what you doing? That's wild. All right. That's wild. <laughs> Gwen Stefani mm-hmm. worked at the Dairy Queen. Jay-Z sold drugs. We know that. We know he was on the block. Just David going to read that like nobody knew that. Like that was like surprise. Brandon Dixon used somebody to shoot wedding this. photography or videography. Brandon Dixon. And you was at a, a call center, right? He was a machine operator, working with his hands. Now he works with his head. That's exciting. Awesome. But think about, what, just put your but David, name. But David, you, did you actually answer the question, or are you just going to roll out with chores as what was your the question? first job? Oh, we're going back to slavery? I, first off, I got <laughs> post-traumatic stress. Okay? Like, is he, did he really just like say that he just worked at his house, and then that was it? Like, where was your first job, sir, that you got a, like, a actual oh, paycheck? Oh, first job, first job, first job, first job. First job with a paycheck. Um, first job with a paycheck. Uh, oh, foot action. Shut up. Foot action. He, get this though. Mm-hmm. So you had to be 16 to work there. Mm-hmm. I was 15 mm-hmm. and lied on my application. So you lied at 15 and for foot check. action and then you stole cheesecake at Olive Garden. I, we, I actually what's stole going sneakers too. What I is, stole shoes. It wasn't me though. It was my manager. Happening? My manager stole shoes, David. and we was made, we was getting to a little okay, bad. Kids, I ain't kids, gonna lie cover to you. your ears. Don't do those things. But that's good. You I are been you redeemed. you just focus. You oh. do, you are you have been. I've been redeemed. You holding it down. Okay. And then I, my first job was um, I worked at well my first official job. I had many before, and it wasn't just chores at the crib because um, I actually didn't get paid for that. So I don't know if that was really a job, but um, slavery. They paid you in food. <laughs> they paid me in food and housing. You feel okay, me? Fine. And if you do something fine. wrong, you, what they do? <laughs> they take it beat away. You. <laughs> slavery. <laughs> slavery. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a slave. I don't know. Um, Nine West. I worked at a shoe store too. Oh. So we have that in common. Yep. Nine West. I was okay. 16. Um, I used to leave school and go my evening in high school. I was slinging them shoes. Mm-hmm. Yo, stories are powerful, man. Yeah. Stories. And I just want everybody to embrace where they're at. Yeah, River Oaks, small for all the Chicago folks. I was was out there. That's in the hood. River Oaks? River Oaks, small. Is Chicago as dangerous as people say? Man, that's a whole other conversation for another time. No, it's a good conversation for right now. Long story short, no. It's not? No, I I really feel like it's a lot of propaganda about how Chicago is so dangerous. Now, don't get me wrong. Shootings happen, Mm -hmm. right? Um, and gang violence is real. Was you on the streets? I definitely. You ever been a trap streets. queen? I never been a trap queen. Okay. Why? Why did I have to be? Because yeah, I'm from just, Chicago. You from the shy? Yeah. Gosh. Dangerous out there. Now, for real, I you did ain't never up. took somebody to somebody you ain't had. You ain't. Mm. You didn't get a now, name. I didn't. So real. real <laughs> you ever dropped that off nowhere? Realest thing. I lived on 63rd Street in the middle of Inglewood. Mm-hmm. So for those that know, um, but I never. Um, Assimilated to the culture of 63rd Street. I never was really a part of that culture. But and I Brandon don't really know it. Okay, I, I just out. I didn't mix in with that culture until um I never did. But I was I lived on 63rd Street for a little bit of time, mostly most of my high school years. I went Street, to college. Dangerous. I went to college and that's where <laughs> no I went safe, to Ain't no safe 63rd wait, Street. Wait, <laughs> no way. Yeah, it was I mean, but it was still good. I mean, you know, you heard shots outside your window sometimes and mm-hmm. you just knew to just kinda like lay low a little bit, you know, cool, cool, cool. Lay low um, a little bit. <laughs> you any, got to... any number past fifty. <laughs> any number past fifty? I ain't was never seen a safe sixty third street. No. And it's Lower. actually kinda gentrified now because it's right outside the University of Chicago. But okay, okay. I didn't go to my first trap house until I got to college. So you was a trap queen. But I didn't know it was a trap <laughs> house. And I'm not going to name the person mm-hmm. that owned that. Yep. But I didn't go to my first trap house. don't tell you. They yeah. just like, just meet me here. <laughs> just. But I used to actually get it, get hang us, out. Get us to so and so. I used to hang out at the trap house unknowingly. It's a whole con- that's a whole other conversation. Lead but I had back no idea. Underneath the steps. I had no idea. And walk away. I used to kick it at the trap house. It was, Kick it at the trap it, house. Yeah, because I had my friends used to go over there. It was like the hangout spot. I what didn't What they know. doing now? Are they still your friends? Let's talk uh, about your friends real quick. <laughs> it's some of them trap queens though. They are not actually. They're they're You educated. don't know not one that got lost in the mix. Uh, they are, are these not. Mean no, Chicago none of the streets. I'm telling you, of that group of um, fine young women from the University of Illinois in Champaign, Urbana, they are still holding it down to this day. Everybody and if any hanging of them out catch this house, part of nobody it. Nobody get turned out. You mean we to tell didn't. me that ain't how it work in the hood. That's okay. Not, S- somebody get turned out. I, I don't I don't know. I know how these things work. 
I don't, I don't know, not now. I don't yeah. know where this conversation is going, but um, <laughs> I know we was, yeah, we supposed to be talking about starting. So Chicago how do you start going not, to the trap house? Chicago is not. <laughs> wait, how do you start? How do you start going to the trap house? How do you start in your trap house? The introduction. Um, you just start with the vision, right? <laughs> 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 and you don't have fear. You know, you don't get fearful uh, of getting arrested. You just go with it. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So Chicago's not as dangerous as people make it out to be. Don't go visit Chicago. Go go hang out. Oh, absolutely. Oh, real quick, uh, import, uh, incoming information from Patricia. Uh, it actually, it's, it's actually Patricia with a K, okay? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's spelled <laughs> just how it sounds. Viola I Davis. I feel like you, you, you memorized that because you at one point were struggling with it. Oh, so now you want to. Until today. Okay. Until today. Yo, we've been, t- how long have we known each other? About three months I've been struggling until I put together. Until oh, today. it's Patricia with a K. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, Patricia with a K sent me this. Viola <laughs> Davis. Viola <laughs> Davis grew up in uh, object abject poverty. What? Yo, okay, don't lie. It. This ain't me. This ain't spell me. A B J E C T poverty abject. That's a word. Can we, def- let's define no. that right quick. Okay, <laughs> like, let's just. Abject. Wait, Dan- Donald just gave you like the she cut it. She was in <laughs> abject. She was in abject poverty. Something, Something. Okay. So abject for those that need a definition, because I sure certainly did. Experienced a present to the maximum degree. So horrible, completely without pride or dignity, self-abasing. Mm. <laughs> so is, lower than lower than low. And she this whole time, I'm thinking poor, poor. Patricia with a K slow, and she spelled that wrong. Right, right. Because I was like abject. <laughs> Like, I'm glad I didn't say what I was thinking out loud. I'm and like, I, how you gonna and then I thought notes? I heard D instead of B, B as in boy. So then I was like, okay, he said A, A, D, but then he was like, like abject. Jason, I'm like, does Ab- David have a problem? Like, what Abstract he- poverty. She was okay. in abstract poverty. Okay, abstract, right. <laughs> abject. And was forced to resort to stealing and crawling through maggot-filled garbage bins to get food. What? Ooh, Viola Davis. What? Uh, she, so what I, she wouldn't have given to be a trap queen. She would have loved it. She was in trash why cans. Why do you keep going back Maggie, to this? Do you want to be a trap king? Like, is that what's I, that? Wa- I ain't going to lie to you. You want to be I on the block? I used to be a rapper. I used to be a rapper. I had plenty of trap queens in my bars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, this podcast is supposed to be inspirational and motivational. Oh, shouts out to our sponsor, Shooters Camp. Vision. Okay. Reach. Uh, hold on. Give me something to read, Brandon. Okay. Um, shouts out to our sponsor, Shooters <laughs> Camp. Come learn how to how to uh, how to monetize, create a career, a new career, and monetize your life with a camera. I don't know. Give, yo, all right. So, so transparent moment. Uh, Shooters Camp is really, really dope. I've been Absolutely. able to see him um, like take somebody who didn't really know what they wanted to do. They just know I want to be an entrepreneur. He throws a camera in their hand teach them everything they need to know, and now they're traveling as photographers and videographers. So mm-hmm. uh, shouts out to our sponsor, Shooters Kid. Making thousands cash out here. Your sponsorship package to uh, Real Social Proof. Info at Real Social Proof on Cash App. We appreciate that. Um, how can they? Oh, oh. so I is that a question? That joke. I only caught how it. Can they I caught it. it. I caught it. Yeah, that's fine. It wasn't a joke. No, I, was, I, I really got caught because uh, Patricia with a K sent me something. <laughs> was it a joke? Which one? Oh, that, was, that was a serious it's testimonial. It's, it is. That's real. You get into the money. Yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> how can you, so Patricia with a K? Is this how can they stay excited? Is that a question from somebody? Oh, you wanted to know. Okay. So how it is a question you, from somebody. It is a question from somebody. Yes. Really? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Shooters sorry. Camp is amazing. <laughs> From Katricia. <laughs> okay. All right, she let's do somebody. it. <laughs> okay, so how can, <laughs> how, can but, I'm sorry. how can people stay excited? My answer, and I'll let you answer um, as well, Dusty. How can people stay excited? I believe it's, uh, it's an internal thing, okay? I don't think it's like really external factors that, that keep people excited. So when I was um, when I was a broke college student, I was excited about the future. Nobody had to like keep me excited. I just knew I was going to be out of this situation one day where I didn't have any money. When I worked at the Olive, when I worked at Applebee's working at college, now I wasn't making no money at Applebee's, but I was still excited 
Like, there are people in third world countries way more excited than somebody that's living in a penthouse in Buckhead somewhere. So I believe excitement is internal. you got to find something inside of you that keeps you excited. And I believe that see it, it starts with uh, gratefulness. Gratefulness. Because would, somebody who is living in a third world comfort, country, they're grateful for the fact that they have a family. They're grateful for the fact that they found something to eat today. Excited about it. We got mm-hmm. it. But there are some people that just aren't grateful for anything and feel like they built their whole life their own when and, and acknowledge no higher power, no God that provided that. They got so much money, they, they're not excited about life because um, it's not internal. It's only the stuff that makes them excited. So that would be my answer on how to stay excited. I was going to... When I you know said that was grateful, going to give it, me was, a round of applause it was. It was. It was. We need the, we need the audio. Understand? Thank you. <laughs> These Thank manual you. claps or something else. Thank you. So, Donna, we need notes. Help. To, I'm, I'm writing a note. We need fillers. Filler. <laughs> we need automated we need that, claps. We need that clap so we can put it in. We, gotta use it. we need a few. Yeah, we're going to right, push it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was so deep. It kind of you know took my, took my words away from me. But um, gratefulness, I think, is critical, right? And then with that, I was thinking about contentment. Um, I think you need to figure out for yourself. I think defining excitement depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. Um, and some for some people, excitement can be around just making the money. True. Um, True. And, and, and I don't know if that's something just to completely rule out. I mean, some people get excited when they see, you know, uh, a direct uh, financial gain as a result of what they're doing. They're like, yes. Or it could just be something internal. It could be a spiritual thing it could be god that kind of pushes you to get you excited um it could be listening to podcasts like the real social proof podcast to keep you excited um but real talk it could be just you know outside external resources books people um i know we talk about this a lot of just your circles right so your circle can keep you excited when even you you don't feel excited for me um i always kept an accountability partner so that when i didn't feel excited I could tell that to somebody that could sit, kick me in the butt and say, I need for you to go for this. But it's essentially, though, you can't get caught up in how you feel all the time anyway. Mm-hmm. So you may not always feel excited. And that's something that I think you, we have to come to grips with, too. That's real. There are that's times true. where you may not be excited about it, even though you love it. Even in, in the moments, there may be like, man, today this, is, this sucks. And yeah. it just is what it is. But... You know, you got to have that however comma, like, I'm going to continue to go for it. Absolutely. Even though it's, 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 it's um, do you need to take that? No. Yeah, you need to take that? Do we need to stop? <laughs> uh, okay. We didn't do quiet on the set? Okay, no problem. Um, so we got a question. Donald the Voice coming through. Donald the um, Voice. I'm going to claim him as my viewer. Thank you. Is he on, is he on your side? That is so corny. <laughs> That's, uh, you know me. You know me, Donald. Why won't you? We got, we got support. <laughs> <laughs> she claiming viewers out here. But um, David, Patricia. Patricia is going ham with his cell phone. Okay, so David said, um, Donald asks um, to David, how many businesses have you started that have failed? Ooh. Uh, let me count the ways. Um, but I guess, you know, defining failure, I suppose, I've learned from all of them. But how many businesses have I started? Quantifiably, sir. Uh, so when I first started, um, like we would go out and rake leaves and, you know, shovel snow. And, you know, those are businesses that I suppose it's landscaping mm-hmm. that I started, but mm-hmm. that didn't last too much. It, it didn't last too long. But I, I didn't fail at it. Mm-hmm. I just quit. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, they don't fail at a business. They mm-hmm. just quit. Mm-hmm. You kind of fail when you put some money into stocks and it doesn't perform well, Mm -hmm. that's when it's over. Mm -hmm. But you don't really fail until you quit, right? Um, So how many businesses have I started and quit? Dozens. Yeah. Dozens. I think that's a part of the entrepreneurial way. You have to keep creating and you keep figuring out what did not work. So then when you create the new thing, you know what does work. I've, I've created, I probably can't even count how many things I've started and it was like, oh, for whatever reason, I had to move away from it. I started a... um, Back, this is back before drop shipping was actually popping. I created a planner, um, and back when printing was really, really pricey, mm-hmm. um, in the early 2000s, and was struggling. I had a business partner, 
And we went in and we were so excited about this this planner that we were going to pull out and it was going to be the best planner ever in life. And, you know, that's where the excitement comes in. You know, you're, you're running out the gate. And um, I had a, hired a broker that was going to work with me to get the, the printing done. And he, um, I wrote him a check for $1,500 and he ran off with it. Mm. And went ghost on me. And I never got the money back. And then wow. from there, I had to recover and try to figure out how to still finish the project because th- the printer had already started printing my stuff and was like, we never received your down payment because the dude ran off with the check. And mm-hmm. I thought that, so then I was still, I had lost this money and I still had to pay the printer and I still had to figure it out. So I had to finish for the sake of the printer needed his cash. Um, so I figured it out, but it was it was um, costly and and therefore, I, I started off in the hole, so I couldn't really that year recover, and I just kind of took a step back. Wow. How and long that was ago way was that? Bu- that was like 2011. And that was way before drop shipping was a thing, which mm. makes it easier now to create something like that, where you don't have to have um, all the resources. So I, have, I was sitting on literally like, what, 2,000 planners, and I mm. maybe sold a couple, you know, like 100 or so. So, so, um, do you think, because that was 2011, 11. Yeah. did you start any other businesses since then? So after that, I did some multi-level marketing stuff. I did okay. a, a few businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was in uh, Longevity. That was like, um, and I, I actually still really love that company. I, I have an what affinity What year was that? that? That was um, probably 2012. Okay, so the very next year. Yeah. Got right yeah, back on Entrepreneurial right back Horse. Yeah. yeah. I Great. just was like, okay, look, we're just going to pick up something else. And it, it was profitable for a season. Mm-hmm. Um, I still use the products, but I, I don't really dabble in it anymore. Gotcha, but, yeah. gotcha. Okay. And what else after that? Um, after that, um, I was I was singing, so I kind of took a break from doing that, that, that piece. But then I was doing business consulting. Mm-hmm. So um, I had a friend in Chicago that was, that was a restaurant owner. And so I was behind the scenes helping him kind of get things gotcha. off the ground when he first started his first uh, restaurant. And we would get together and we'd just brainstorm. And I, I put pulled out, put his infrastructure together and pulled some notes together for him nice. and sent him stuff. Um, he's now owning uh, several restaurants. So I love it. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. So, Good stuff. Um, I, I want to uh, share, share some uh, principles, if I could, um, as we continue on this theme of, um, of just getting started. I found out I, I did some I, I did some kind of like I guess personal uh searching and I I mapped out the life cycle of a good idea for those people yep. that start, right? Yep. And I think everybody's probably in one of these phases. One is excitement, meaning the very first the very first thing that happens when you have a business idea and you're going to st- start, you are going to be excited. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Would you agree? Just mm-hmm. excitement. Mm-hmm. Like you, you got this vision and you wake up and it's just on your heart. And like on you're your... going to Great America and you get in oh, the, the roller coaster man. line. Um, and you're like, you're in the line and like, yeah, we're about to wait, go on the roller coaster. Man, <laughs> you're telling all your friends like, <laughs> I can't tell you too much, but it's going down. You feel me? So that first stage is excitement. But then um, it goes into evolution where you have to evolve the idea. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have to start building it now. Mm-hmm. But guess what you lose in the evolution stage? The excitement. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you got to build now. This is, it's not, it's not, you, you talked about it enough already. Mm-hmm. Now people want to see what you're actually building. But after you move from the evolution stage, we go into engagement, meaning we're hitting the streets trying to make and sell this product. But by the time we're engaging people, we may not be as excited because like now it's, it's real. We, we try to make some money. And if we don't get the sales, it's a problem. We're not excited. And for some reason, entrepreneurs stop evolving the idea because we feel like, oh, this logo is perfect. Mm-hmm. This brand is this perfect. This it's is perfect. I, can't, I don't know why this y'all ain't buying it. Ever. It's mm-hmm. the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. And you so stop this... evolving. Mm-hmm. Makes sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the next stage is resistance. So as you encounter people, you receive, you, you start engaging people, you're undoubtedly going to encounter some resistance which sucks. Mm. Everybody is going to encounter some resistance. Some people are going to tell you no. How you handle that determines your success. But then we have to come to resolution. After resistance, resolu- we have to make a decision. 
what are we going to do now? <laughs> am I going to keep moving forward? Am I going to re get? Am I going to get excited again, or am I going to quit and start something else? And then that's something else I get excited about. And then we start evolving the idea, then yeah. engaging in resistance, then resolve. And then we quit that and get excited about it. And that's the life cycle of a good idea. Can, so, I, can I stop you there? Please. So for the resistance piece, though, there, there comes that fork in the road, right, mm -hmm. where you decide either this resistance is something that I can overcome, it's just a temporary boundary or it's a temporary wall that I can break through eventually, or this is really resistance to tell me something's not working and I need to abort mission or reposition. And so I'm sure people get to that fork in the road and they just say abort mission, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go left and I'm just going to try something else because clearly this isn't working. It's I created my product and it didn't sell. I created that new T-shirt line and it just didn't pop. And so something must be wrong with me and I got to leave. Because I'm making zero dollars. Yeah, but that's the problem there. Because we created this product, we encounter resistance, and then it's over. But something's wrong. Something's broken mm -hmm. in the process. Like, we automatically think, oh, because it's not working, um, I need to abort mission. When really, you need to go back to the evolution stage. Maybe people aren't buying because you're not excited anymore. Hmm. Maybe people are resisting because you're not engaging and you're not practicing the sales art. Hmm. So I'm actually, I was talking to Jovan, like we have the, the E-Complex. Yeah. Uh, shouts out to our sponsor, the E-Complex, where you can come <laughs> shoot your videos, <laughs> photos. You can have do your event. Oh, you can have a podcast. We're actually in the E-Complex mm -hmm. on a podcast. So I was talking to Jovan and we were going through the numbers of conversions. Uh, we get leads mm -hmm. and then he does walkthroughs showing people the space and then he's going through his process of how he books gigs. Mm -hmm. And his his conversion rate isn't what we'd all like it to be. Mm -hmm. But he said, oh, I'm terrible at sales. Well, now we know the problem. It's not like anything's wrong with the space, nothing wrong with Jovan, nothing wrong with the people, nothing wrong with the prices, nothing wrong with anything. Mm -hmm. He just probably needs to learn sales. And he said, all right, cool, I'm committed to learn sales. Mm -hmm. His conversion rate will probably increase because... He was open and transparent enough to say, yo, I'm terrible at sales. But some people might say, oh, well, the, the events-based business, it ain't popping. It's no. the prices. It's the prices. It's the colors. We probably need to change the floor. You know what? We need a it's the name stage. of the. It's the name of the, it's the name. venue. No parking. Mm -hmm. Except for really looking inside and saying, okay, what needs, something's broken. Mm. Every business will work. Every business will work. You may not be the type of person today who can carry it out. When you were 16, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. your podcast your or your consulting business would not be as effective as it is mm -hmm. when you were 16 as it is now, mm -hmm. right? Because you've grown. Same I've had some experiences. It, but you're different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can't just abort I learn mission. more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, all right, cool. I, I, I want to, like, how, how do we, okay, we talked about how to start. How do we end this podcast? <laughs> How we do that? How we do, we need a segment. We talked about segments, right? We did. Let me tell y'all real quick, okay? We talked about a whole bunch. We talked about a whole we bunch. We had mad segments, <laughs> but we just started. We did. And then we'll y'all get to hear this conversation of it not yeah. being together. But when y'all hear the segments, y'all be like, "Oh, I remember when they when were they didn't have any started. segments." We did have some. We do have some ideas for segments, but we need people to actually submit ideas for those segments. Right. So, what was the what was some other ideas that we? So he's gonna put me on. Oh, we were gonna do we were gonna do um a a African American uh black African a black female. African, same thing. No, we were just gonna do a, a woman uh, Oh, it wasn't business. black. I thought it was like one of the ideas is black female entrepreneurship. Yeah, right. and we were gonna highlight a, BMF, a woman on BFF. Yeah. BF, BF, BFE. BF what? BFF. Black female. Never mind. Okay, so we're going to do, a, like, highlight female entrepreneurs. Yeah, absolutely. Only. So we need to have a... So we need okay, some people to... Highlight? Let me see if I can find somebody on We here. need some people to highlight. And so they can email Dacia at Real Social Proof. Mm -hmm. You want to set up the email address? Okay. Patricia with a K, she set up Real Social <laughs> Proof. Uh, in the meantime, you could do Real Social Proof. By, but they might, by the time they read this one... Wait, we can't, yeah. We'll have we'll have it set up. Yeah, we'll have it set up. Okay. We'll do it. Um, I rock. Man, listen, I rock with Patricia with a K. Mm. Patricia right, with so a K. <laughs> what else do we have? What else do we have? 
We had something else. Oh, we were going to, you know, um, have entrepreneurs submit ideas and then we could grade them. Oh, my live went out because it was an yeah, hour. Yeah, because it's an hour. Ooh, so we here we are. We're going to end it. How come I can't share it? Okay. All so, right, cool. So, no, no, no. So, um, okay. So, what were some of the other podcasts? I, so, I, we're going to have entrepreneurs send in some ideas okay. for business ideas. And we're going to thumbs up or thumbs down. It's dumb okay. or dope. Um, dumb or dope. <laughs> dumb or dope. Yes, that yeah, was it. Dumb good, or dope. Good. You're right. You're right. So, we were going to do that. And so, if you want to do that, you can email. We'll post about where you can email. Because we don't know where we're going to email just yet. Dacia yep. at realsocialproof.com. Absolutely. We as soon no as website, that email we is. We nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here. We're going to be here. We're starting, though. Yes, we are going to start. We're starting. We, are, we started. Yeah. And, it's, and you know what? There's, some, there's a lesson here, right? Because mm-hmm. until you start, sometimes you don't even know what you need until you start. You really don't know what it is that you need until you get started. Yeah. And so now that we're having this conversation, before we've talked how many times? At least four or five, right? Oh, for sure. None of this came up until right now. It's like, oh, okay, so we need some sound effects. And we probably need a few people in the studio with us. Mm-hmm. And we need somebody to, to look up a few things. Patricia with a K. Katricia. <laughs> <laughs> Katricia. And we need, <laughs> you know, sorry. our email sorry, set up. Patricia we did talk about I'm that sorry. piece. And we need to get our segment. So we need people to um, actually, we need some promo, mm-hmm. right? So um, you don't Can realize. Can we call in like Howard Stern? You could. How do We, we got to get a phone line, though? No. Why, I, I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you about that later. But there's a software that you can use where they can call into the software, but then you can pull it up on your computer. Will they hear the ring? I want the people I to hear know. the ring. All right, we got to call online too. Okay, you're doing the most. You do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, he was excited about that. So we'll get the call. We'll get the call, David Stern. David Stern. <laughs> yeah. We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get the call going. We'll get the car. Yeah. That was good. That was good. We, sound effect needed, right? Clearly. Sound effect needed. Clearly. Okay, so we can get the sound effect board, mm-hmm. stuff like that? I am not putting a <laughs> Okay. But, like, no, we, no, we I'm saying. like a, what would you, what's the, what's the modern day? That's not our brand. But okay, on, but right. on the, on, but can, can I have a little board, though, where I could press a button and it'll do something? You got that? You can figure it out. Figure okay, he's going to research that. Okay. Yeah, see, shouts out to y'all that's on here right now. You are helping yeah. us build this podcast. Yeah. And I hope this go I hope this is a, a testimony to show you you just need to start. Just start. Nobody cares as if and, and here's the thing, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's not gonna be perfect until you do it imperfectly. Practice makes perfect. Epic. That was good. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. All right, cool. So do you wanna you wanna end it or do I end it? Um we don't wanna end it like Brandon ends it because he, you know, he just he'd be like, I'm a I'm out. Done. <laughs> He'd be like, I'm Any out. questions? <laughs> He'd be like, I'm done. It's just, we, it'll be a song that never ends if we don't just right. end it. But um, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to today's episode of The Real Social Proof with your co host, Dacia Ruth, and the co host, David Shans. We both co host. Hey. I was like co MVPs. Who was that? Jason Kidd and somebody else was co MVP in Green so- Hill? So we're gonna need them. One day. So what do we need to, them to do after today? If they, um, if you made it to the end of this podcast, we have some calls to action, right? We absolutely. Have some things we need you to do. Absolutely. Send in your requests of not requests. Send in your questions. Send in what? Your business questions. Just your business ideas. It's so unprofessional. And so that we can right. <laughs> He's like Donald. Like tell me. Tell me what to do, Donald. I'm have looking no at you for. Action. <laughs> so good. This is so good. We, yeah, if you want to, if you Sponsors. want us to shout out your business and you want to pay us to do that, we we'd be more than happy to do that for you. We pay have sounded, access. It's too aggressive. Okay, that wasn't a good sales tactic. Uh-uh. Okay. So, um, if you want to sponsor and be a part of our real social proof podcast, if you like to, gr- <laughs> Brandon just moved like, the camera. If you like to grow with us, okay. If you if you want. If you want your business highlighted and promoted with all your social media okay, handles fine. and your website so and your that? email address so people listen, this is going okay, to be sorry. the biggest podcast in the world. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. And um yes. So if you want to be a if you want to be of a course. sponsor, and we not we, we want greenbacks, okay. I don't want your sponsorship by sending us a bunch of juice. You know, like those chip companies See, that send I'm, you a bunch I'm of chips. To the point. Or, if you wanna if you wanna pay us to highlight your your business <laughs> If you yeah. you know, then we can work that out. Um, or if you want to send a donation, because this uh, podcast blessed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah can, yeah. can you put on like the yeah. the, the, yeah. the music? <laughs> the church music. The we got organ. We the got organ music. 
If this message blessed you, See. go on and send a cash app See. to Info here. Real Social Proof. See. <laughs> I love it. Okay. But nah, we're going to wrap this thing up, man. Listen, we are excited because we are just building this thing and you're building it with us. We're building this thing together. together, Okay. So this is the start. And obviously we don't have everything perfect. We don't have everything put together, but we just started. Okay. Let that be a lesson to you guys. Just start. Just start. Just start where you are, with what you got and get it going. Boom. Donald, bring in the music. (laughs) And we out. And we out. And we out.